Good morning. The Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory welcomes all who enters our holy doors as we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The sung ordinary parts of the Mass are found in the Missalette, beginning on page 189. The processional hymn is number 313, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 313. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather here in the cathedral, we join with those that are praying this Mass with us by means of television. In a special way, we reach out in compassion to the suffering, to the sick, those in hospitals and nursing centers and the homebound, and all who pray with us. For today, as we begin this new week, we hear in our scripture readings, Jesus speaking to us about the end of time. And he says, little flock, do not be afraid that the Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. But Jesus also says that where our treasure is, there our heart is, which means we have to ask ourselves, what are our priorities? Do we place God above all else? And for the times that we have failed to do so, for the times that we've made our treasure that of the earth instead of that of heaven, we ask that God forgive us. I confess to Almighty God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers, that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. 
By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had the opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out an exhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all of his property. But if that servant says to himself, 
my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk. Then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accordance with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who is ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be, says Jesus. Another very thought-provoking verse in Scripture. Last week I gave homework. I asked us to reflect further on what we had heard on that earlier passage in Luke's Gospel that we've been studying over these last few weeks. When Jesus, last week we heard, speaks about growing rich in what matters to God, so the assignment was that this past week we were to reflect a little bit deeper in our own personal journey of faith to ask ourselves, really, what does matter to us? And does what matters to us, does it parallel to what we believe, as the Bible tells us, and what Jesus says by his very life, does it mirror also what, what God truly considers to matter? And so this week we hear Again, this very thought-provoking verse, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And so we ask ourselves this week, what do we treasure the most? Meaning, where are our priorities? What do we hold in place above all else? If it's God that we treasure and the eternal kingdom that Jesus says he has come to bring to us and has opened the gates for us, then we know everything else that we treasure will fall in line, and we will, in fact, appreciate it that much more. Jesus assures us that when we make what we treasure here on earth everlasting glory with the Father, then he says, do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. It's translated from the original as pleased. That it's not, okay, you can have it. It says, the Father is pleased to give us the kingdom. And it is Jesus in the parable that he says, in the explanation that he further gives to Peter and to the other disciples, the understanding that when we indeed seek that treasure, then we have no fear. When we seek that treasure, we truly will be a people that appreciates and is grateful for all of God's blessings to us. And that when the Lord comes again, as Jesus assures us he will, then we will receive him in faith and not in trepidation or fear. What is our treasure? Some would say, well, I treasure my family. I treasure my marriage. I treasure my children. But see, the problem can be that when we place even our children that we love so much above our relationship with God, it can become very unhealthy. If we place our marriage, our spouse above God and say, this is my priority, what happens is that we can become very controlling. If we place our children above all else, even God, we're not helping our children one bit we're actually enabling them for failure because we protect them in a way in which they don't have the strength to get up and dust themselves off when they may make mistakes. When we do everything for our children and everything for our marriage and everything for our job, we think those are good things, and they are. 
But if God's not our treasure, our priority, then we can become very controlling people. We can become an unhealthy, enabling people, and we can make people around us very sick, very ill. No, when we place the kingdom, meaning God, in eternal glory with him above all else, that that becomes our treasure, then we can appreciate our spouse that much more. And we can accept our spouse for who she or she, he or she is, and that means not a perfect person. So when they disappoint us, as they always will, as we will disappoint them, we can be forgiving. When our children fail us at times, and our parents fail us, and the other side, and they certainly will because they're human beings like all of us, again, we can be more forgiving. But if we place people are things above God, then we're setting them up and we're setting ourselves up, most of all for disappointment. And then we turn away from God himself and say, see, look at all of this disappointment in my life. Look at all that I have to go through. But God will ask us, but where's your treasure? Do you place me first so that then you can appreciate all of these people I have entrusted to your care and all of the things that I've given to you, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Because when we have our treasure as God in the eternal glory that is brought to us through Christ, then it's going to be reflected in our behaviors and the choices that we make. Then we can understand a little bit deeper why Jesus says, do not fear any longer, little flock, for it is God who wants you to know the kingdom, that God is pleased to give you the kingdom. So in order to place above all else the greatest treasure that we have, and that when people ask us, or then what people just see in our very behaviors, now that's a believer in faith. That's one who is truly destined to place heaven above all else then we will see in terms of how we treat each other and we will see how we seek to be prepared when the Lord comes again and what Jesus is trying to speak to us about in today's reading, this passage from St. Luke. When we see that indeed God is pleased to give us the kingdom, then we will be a people always awake, seeking to be aware, and always prepared. That's how we get ready for the coming again of Jesus at the end of time. First, it means staying awake. Being awake refers not only in preparation for the coming of Jesus again at the end of time, but being awake is to say, God, I'm going to be awake to how you're working in my life, all the possibilities that are occurring. See, sometimes we can become a people of habit. We can become so entrenched in what we do, and it seems like it's just day in and day out, the same things and the same people. That's because so often we're asleep in faith. We're failing to see how God is has blessing us and the new possibilities that he's offering to us. And that's why I get so excited when I hear marriages, husbands and wives saying after 20, 30, 40 years or more, Father, I've discovered something new about my husband, something different about my wife. And all of a sudden, they start paying attention to each other in a different way, and they stop finishing the sentences, and they actually let them have a complete thought. They actually let them engage with them, and they have a relationship, and they begin to see each other as God sees them, as his children. They pay attention. They're aware of the possibilities that God gives. It's the same way in our jobs and our responsibilities. All of a sudden, we recognize when we seek to be awake that God is touching us in this way, in this coworker, and in this project, and even in the struggles and in the pain and in the midst of our aches and our sickness, all of a sudden, we see God's hand, and we are open to new possibilities to grow deeper. That's why Jesus says, be awake. But he also says, be aware. To know that all can be taken from us. It can all end tomorrow. It can all end today. 
our call is to recognize how fast indeed life passes. And don't we say that so often? Gosh, time flies. We look at our children and our grandchildren and we say, but I remember when they were born. We look at our spouses and we say, I remember when we first met. And time passes so quickly. So to be aware is then to be more appreciative of one another and of how God indeed is working in our lives. To be aware that time flies, that it passes so quickly, is to be cognizant of our call to live as blessed people. And of course, it's always about being prepared. Christ will come again. That's the promise of Jesus. And so the Lord and our Savior tells us, you must also be prepared for an hour you do not expect for the Son of Man will come. So indeed, our call, our faith journey is about preparedness, not to live in fear, but to live in preparedness each day so that when we get it right, the way God teaches us in Christ, when we understand, when we place God first above all else, when God is our treasure and when heaven is our inheritance, then we will be prepared because we will live as a people of peace in a world torn by strife and division. We won't be negatively affected by all of that which is happening around us because within us, we will be content that it is God indeed who is our treasure. The world won't change, but we will begin to change. This week, let us further reflect not only on what matters to God so that we can grow rich and that goodness, but ask ourselves, what do we really treasure and who do we really treasure? If it's not God first, then let's look at why we have some of the pain and the problems in our relationships and in our families and in the struggles. But when we place God as our treasure above all else, and indeed heaven as our inheritance, Maybe we'll see God's hand working through those struggles a little bit better, and we will go deeper in our faith. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be, says the Lord. Eternal glory, our loving God, is the treasure we seek to embrace, and so in faith we profess what we believe. I believe in one God. We seek to place God and our faith in the Lord above all else, 
And we ask the Lord to help us in, by answering our prayers. For an outpouring of grace in the universal church, may she be strengthened despite persecution to spread the good news of the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For an end to racial discord in our communities, may we see one another as a child of God and treat one another as such. We pray to the Lord. For all those who serve and protect our communities, may God inspire them to work with justice and compassion, and may they receive respect they deserve. We pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, may the call, which flows from the heart of God, find good soil in the faithful people of our diocese, and vocations blossom in response to God's will. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family, we may demonstrate a readiness for the coming of the Lord in this Jubilee year of mercy by showing God's merciful love to all we meet, we pray to the Lord. For the families of Francis Guerrero and Beatrice Miller, may they be consoled in their grief by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed and for the repose of the soul, soul of Virgie Matsugamba, for whom this mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father, we are grateful for the treasure you bring to us in Jesus our Savior, the gift of eternal life with you. Help us to place you above all else and therefore come to appreciate all that you offer to us here on earth. And we ask, Father, that you answer these prayers, for we bring them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 304, I Not Has Seen, number 304.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The communion hymn is number 226, Take and Eat This Bread, number 226. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The recessional hymn is number 331, The King Shall Come, number 331.